heck, and sink. I've got to send all my friends, family, and business associates, which by the way is why I have a palm, I have to send it all to the mothership and have Google give it back to me. Think about that. I guarantee you not many of you have. Calendars, where I'm going to be for the next three months. I've got to send that to Google and then get it back. And it stays in Google calendars. You delete Google calendars, it deletes it from your phone. You've got to leave it for them to screw with or you can't sync your phone, right? Think about that. Everybody Googles their own data. We're going to talk about de-anonymizing stuff, but let's understand something. You think, ah, you know, I run a search looking for spanking websites. They don't know who I am. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Mainly because at some point you have Googled your own name. You have Googled your own address. You have Googled your own phone number. You have go How many people here, show of hands, and I know the answer, it's one third, but how many people here have Googled their social security number? Come on, show of hands. You big fat liars, there's only about 20 hands up. A lot of you have. And think about the things that all of these things that are now integrated into Google, tell Google about you. Double click, ad mob. Double click an ad mob, that's enough. But feed burner. RSS feed tells me everything you're interested in, what your politics are, what your religion is, what your tech bent is. Are you a Mac guy? Are you a, a Linux guy? Are you, I can't even think of anything else worth. Uh, now, docs, spreadsheets, calendar. How many of you in this room are cloud computers? How many of you use cloud computing? Come on, half the room. That information is gone. I'm going to scroll through some of this. Google profile. As if they don't know everything about you anyway, they invite you to put all your information in one nice place. Google health. You're not creeped out that Sergey Brin knows when your last prostate exam was? Come on. Google voice. Let me ask you something. How many of you have Google Voice? 85% of the room. It gives Google your home, your cell phone, your work, and everybody who you talk to. Just think about that. Really doesn't need elaboration. Let's talk about Android. We're going to talk about this a lot more with, with Mac because Apple is much, much smarter about this. But let me tell you, everything that you use a phone for is another drip, drip, drip of your privacy disappearing. Use Google Maps? Come on. It gives away your location and it tells people you're interested in that location. If it's a guns and ammo store, they know something about you. If it's an abortion clinic, they know something about you. If it's a divorce lawyer, they know something about you. You scan a barcode, they know what products you're interested in. You look up a movie, they know what type of movies you like watching. Okay. Mobile phones are, again, a huge game changer. And as you're going to see, Google and Apple, who are in the forefront of this, they understand something. That cell phone is in your pocket. It monitors everything you do, everywhere you go, everybody you talk to, every interest you have. The more functional, the more useful that phone is, if you use it to scan text, if you use it to click on a barcode, if you use it to pull up a map, if you use Google 411, every single one of those things goes into the big book of knowledge that I know about Bob or I know about Sally. And it never, ever, 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 ever goes away. Google goggles. This is the most brilliant thing. First of all, this is a terrifically useful program. 
I can take a picture of a work of art and it can tell me everything that I want to know about that work of art. It will recognize it and it'll say, this is, uh, you know, Mona Lisa and here's the whole history and whatever. Google will know that I'm sitting in Italy, you know, for the next week. Barcode scanning. I click on a barcode in a supermarket, it not only knows what I'm interested in, it sends a location aware pulse and it knows physically where I am down to the exact aisle, down to the exact aisle. And again, this is, the, this is not, these are not my icons. These are Google's icons. These are all the things that they want to know about you and index about you. And because this is such a great program, you're going to use it. Use Gmail because Gmail is simple, quick, cheap. It doesn't report your IP address to the world. It gives you a gazillion gigabytes to store stuff and it tells you, don't throw away your email, archive it. Why the hell do you think that is? Because they love you? Because they want to give you five gig on their servers? Because Sergey discovered he's your third cousin? He wants all your email there to be indexed, to be searched, to be cross-referenced, so they have a picture of you. So they own your eyeballs. And so they understand your eyeballs. If there's 100 emails back and forth between you and somebody they've identified as your mom about kidney cancer, they know either you or your mom has kidney cancer, and probably the algorithm knows which one of you it is. Gmail is great. And by the way, they may not report your IP address, but they absolutely buffer your IP address. Google Goggles is unbelievable. It's an example of where it's going. Uh, what the heck is this? Google Shopping. Okay, Google provides a free 411 service. They provide voice to text. Why do they provide voice to text? Because if you take advantage of voice to text, and by the way, what you don't know is, Google converts all your voicemail messages to text even if you don't use that service. Why? Because it's another window into your soul. Somebody leaves a message, hey Bob, uh, you know, uh, we're meeting at such and such a place and uh, there's strippers <laughs> and this and that. Google knows that. Every voicemail message left on Google for your Google Voice account is indexed as if it was typed into text. Oh, uh, how many of you can read that thing with the red arrow? Well, for those of you that can't, Google Mobile Terms of Service, you give them the right to constantly record and constantly buffer and constantly archive and then resell your location. And since it's GPS and Skyhook on a lot of phones, they know where you are within 10 feet all the time. Uh, the heck is this? Right. Location aware Google Maps. What you don't realize is Google Maps are now location aware. Not just latitude. You can use maps that sync not just on your phone, which you probably already know about, but even on your laptop. These are location-aware devices. Now let's talk about latitude. I don't know, how many of you use latitude? A decent amount. How many of you know that do use latitude know that it constantly buffers your location and saves it forever? You can delete it so it doesn't show up. Google still saves it. Ah. Here's an example of what's being developed. Now, I've got to tell you, this is a brilliant program. This is a functional program. This is an unbelievably privacy-invading program. This is called Geocron. Geocron sets up computer activities based on your location. You can tell Geocron to send your wife an SMS when your train is about to pull into your home station Honey, come pick me up. Frankly, it's a brilliant program. Enormous functionality, terrific functionality. 
You've got a 14-year-old daughter? <laughs> you know she's been seeing a bad 17-year-old guy? You can have her phone send you a text message. She's on her way <laughs> to Vinny's house. When that occurs, when her phone gets within a mile of Vinny's house. Now, terrifically functional, yes. People will be using this, yes. Will this be buffered and tell about you? It absolutely will. Google is brilliant in that it not only makes its programming open to the world, unlike the, unlike the Nimrods at Apple, but they give you functionality. They give you plugins. They give you access to APIs. They want you to write programs that helps invade the privacy, helps document every single activity of Android phone users. Now this is what they used to say, Google Chrome, most of the user experience takes place on the web. That's not what they say anymore. They know most of it takes place on the cell phone and most of it takes place when you're not on the web. Google TV, how many of you know that Google is now working with Logitech and Sony and Dish Network to put together a device? Google will know, you know, it's like the Santa Claus song, they know when you're sleeping, they know when you're awake, they know when you're watching porno. They know when you're in front of the TV and what you're watching. What you watch on TV tells a lot about you. How much time you spend in front of the TV tells a lot about you. When you're home tells a lot about you. Google Music. Google hates that Apple has that huge iTunes penetration. They're starting Google Music and I guarantee you they're going to find a way to link it to every damn other Google product, including Android phones. I mean, you have iTunes on an Apple phone, you're going to have Google Music on an Android phone, and they are going to give Apple a run for their money, which, again, spanking Steve Jobs, you know, kind of hard to feel bad about that. <laughs> Google power and metering. Yes, folks, Google is going to be providing electricity to more and more people. They've started a public utility. They're going to sell power. They're going to know how much power you use and what you do. And they are, it's mandatory that if you buy, if you buy electricity from Google, you must use what's called intelligent metering, which means a lot of your devices are going to be hooked up to Skynet. They will be able to tell by a surge of power consumption on the refrigerator, you've opened the refrigerator door, you've closed it again. You've gone back to your TV, you've turned the channel, Google TV. You've gone into the bedroom, you've turned on the light in there. I, I don't know, this creeps me out beyond belief. It's not a secret. You can go to Google, to, to, to Google blogs, and Google will tell you about what they're doing. Google Travel. Google wants to know everywhere you go. They just bought a travel, a travel uh, recommendations firm. Google News, we've talked about that. Listen, Bitly, everybody here uses bit.ly, Bitly. Everybody uses it. If I click on a Bitly link and it sends me to spankme.com, by the way, I keep using that as an example, don't read anything into that. Um, <laughs> I got to say that, come on. If you use, quiet, whatever you're about to say, don't say it. If you use Bitly, every URL, every shortened URL that you click on tells me something about you. Google hates that. Google goes nuts when somebody knows something about you that they don't know. So they've started G-O-O-G-L. They now have a URL shortener, a URL shortener. And one of the things that if you're paying attention, you're going to see is Google does things to screw Apple, and Apple constantly does things to screw Google. Apple, as you're going to see when we get into Apple, new version of Safari strips out ads. Does Steve Jobs do that because he loves you? No. Steve Jobs does that. So Apple are the only people who can serve you ads. It strips out all the Google ads. Pretty freaking smart. Google does the same sort of thing. 